Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stevie Weeby special guest tonight please welcome comedian rachel wolfson Louder. how you doing pound it all right thanks for coming that was a beautiful intro did you like it yeah okay Is, did you write that yourself no i just i was practiced a little bit but was, I was that the nbc intro no that wasn't the nbc one oh, did it, it sound be. like it it should be okay yeah did you want some of those um, candies? Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think, wow, there's so much hospitality. Yeah. You got your Perrier. Oh, my gosh. It, honestly, before I even came in here, it's like yeah. you knew exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because I was about to purchase these yeah. at CVS on the way here. Have um, you been to the World Market? We got those at the World Market. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, no, but you know where else they, ha they have them um, at... Um, this other place on Melrose called Mel and Rose. Oh, and then is it a candy store? No, it's like a specialty goods Italian. Okay. But they have like rare candies. Yeah, these are very yeah. Rare. And you're craving those fizz, fizzy colas? Yeah, these ones specifically. I'm going to spit my gum. Yeah, up. no, it's okay. You can put it on the table. Oh, yeah, you can put it whatever Actually, you want to do. I'm going to save oh, it. Okay. Oh, I wasn't going to give it to okay. you, but that's very kind. That, <laughs> yeah, well, we're already piece. like soul, soul brothers and sisters. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. I'm yeah. Here, would yeah. Once you, let you try one, you should try some of those too. These are uh, I'm so taste um, every flavor. Haribo fizzy colas. If you want to sponsor the Stevie Weeby show, please um, contact me at Instagram. dot com slash q u a n g o u. So good. Can I actually? I have a I have nicotine in my mouth. Oh, good for you. So I had to I put that out. Can I try one of those? Oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Which ones are please. better? Okay, um, sorry. They're both amazing for their own reason. Yeah. Ooh, now so these are these Perrier. are mini rainbow frogs. Mm. Mm, mm -hmm. These are pretty damn good. Mm -hmm. Damn. Frogs taste better rainbow. Yeah. So you were highly recommended mm. by your peers. Oh wow! Shout out to um, what's her name? Vanessa um, Johnson. Vanessa Johnson. Yeah. She highly recommended you. She's a comedy wife. She's my comedy wife. And then you guys are pretty tight. Mm -hmm. How'd you guys? How'd you guys meet? We were introduced by a comedian named Mike Faberman. Uh-huh. Jesus, not working, mm -hmm. Craig. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so we were introduced by comedian Mike Faberman. I was performing on a show at Flappers like a couple years ago. Shout out to Flappers for uh, booking her. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, in Burbank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I walk into the green room and Faberman introduces us. Mm -hmm. And she goes, you're a comedian? And I was like, yeah. She's like, but you're hot. And I was like, oh, okay. And then it was oh like, she was like low key kind of hitting on me. Really? No, but the, we ended up, obviously, we're just best friends. Cause yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, so shout out to Vanessa. Yeah. Shout out to v Vanessa. She's she is from. My, she is my wife, comedy wife. She, uh, she's from Minnesota as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so speaking, are you from, are you from California? Where are you from originally? Born and raised Las Vegas. Las Vegas mm -hmm. represent UNLV or what? No, I, um, they rejected me. Thank oh, you. did you? Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Sorry. Did you? No, it's totally fine. Where'd you end up going? I went to three different colleges. Yeah. I went to undergrad mm -hmm. in Vermont, mm -hmm. a small liberal arts school. Mm -hmm. And then I transferred to American University in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And then I dropped out of there because it was way too cold. And I was like, I'm going to finish up school in Boca Raton, Florida at Lynn University. Yeah. Where I got my master's. Good for you. Thank you. Those are qu are quite a few schools you attended. Yeah, I have like several degrees. Oh, what 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 that are, are worth like probably a million dollars, but I'll never. I haven't had a job worth the degrees yet. But you got them. Yeah, I got them. Congratulations! They're in my back pocket. Yeah, you got them. I'll show them. Like if I get pulled over, I'm like, yeah, but also here are my three degrees. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, so what was it like? Where was your favorite place to to live during that time in college? 
Um, I like them all for different reasons. What was that, Craig? What was that? Closer. Is that, is that good? Okay. Closer. Now, since since you said that, I could. I'm gonna eat another. Now we're gonna re-up. Yeah. yeah, I need like more. So colas. now, now that's oh, what gosh. you cost. Colas. These frogs are amazing. Yeah. Here, you go. here, here trade these. Frogs. Trade these. frogs. Um, I like them all for different reasons. Vermont mm-hmm. was cool because I got to experience nature in a way that I've never like. I didn't even know what seasons were because I grew up in Vegas and <laughs> right. I didn't like know. What, I thought a coat. They're like bring your winter coat. So I brought sweatshirts. And then I realized that's not a winter coat. What's a winter coat? East like, coat. That what's an East Coast winter coat? It's like then? a North Face with those like marshmallow puff. Like it swish swishes when you walk. Right, right. And you just like look buff uh, <laughs> all the time. Like you have those mm-hmm. ma- like state puff marshmallow body. Yeah. Um, that's a winter coat. Dude, yeah. it gets cold. Doesn't it gets it? so cold. I have never experienced coldness like that in my life. And then DC was cool because it's the capital, and there's like. Um, so much history there. I saw Obama get inaugurated. Oh, that's amazing. Like that was like a historical moment. And then um, Florida is amazing for, you know, the beach or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like also just kind of a toxic place because it's No, why would you say that about Florida? Well, it's not. I mean, have you ever Googled Florida man? No. There's this like Facebook thing that went around a couple weeks ago and it's like Google Florida man and then your birth date and it'll be like Florida man uh, blew up him, his leg or his penis off in a bus uh, in Daytona and it's like always like some like weird Florida man ate someone's oh. face off. Oh my God. On the freeway. Yeah. What is it about Florida? Is it because there's nothing it's, to do? Um. Well, yes and also... I think it's like a big recovery state. Like they send a lot of people to go down there to get clean or whatever. Rehabs. And there's a lot of people who are on, like there's a lot of old people. So they're mm-hmm. on a lot of drugs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like a lot of people, you know, get into that. And I yeah. think it's just like a mixture plus with the sun. Yeah. Isn't there a lot of, a lot of marsh area there too? Like swampy stuff? Yeah. Swamps. It's like kind of, you know, it just, it's a sunny place for shady people. That's what they call it. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So, um, how how did you when did you decide to move to Los Angeles and wh- and then how did you get into comedy? Mm. Well, I did improv as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, like my mom put me in after school private drama groups and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then when I was living in Florida, I was like, "This is where people come to die." So. I don't want to live like the my entire youth here. In Florida. I just feel, I don't know. I just, I was working a job in social media and I just wasn't doing anything with it. So I wanted to move closer to my family, but I didn't want to move back home to Vegas because that's also a place where people go to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I just think that uh, it's true. I mean, it's a huge retirement community. Yeah. Both of these places are just like where people go to spend the rest of the end of their lives. And I just like w- yeah. was like, I want to begin my life. And I always loved California. Oh, yeah. I always loved the vibes here ever since I was a little kid. My dad's family is from here. He was born and raised here. Mm-hmm. Um, went to Van Nuys or uh, Grant High School. Sorry. Uh, hell yeah. And grew up in Van Nuys. So it was kind of a second home to me. And I ended up getting into comedy because I used to work for Levity, which is the corporate um, company that owns all the improvs. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. So like I because I have a master's in marketing and I was like, I um, I applied for a job doing social media for all of the improvs. OK. A couple yeah. years ago. I worked at the improv myself. Yeah. In Tempe. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. That was a food runner. Oh, wow. But continue. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So, then I ended up working at the Hollywood Improv as a bartender because I worked, yeah, I worked in house, um, you know, doing marketing and social media for the company for a year. And then I was like, I want to do stand up. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, we'll get you a job like bartending at the improv or whatever. And so they hooked it up. The manager there, Rita, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I was there for like five months and then I ended up getting fired. (laughs) I got fired too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. dude. But like, it's the best thing. I got fired from Tempe Improv. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be a comedian, yeah, it's a good place to start in the clubs. But if you're serious about, you know, your career and doing comedy, those nights when you're working at the clubs are the nights you should be 
doing stand-up right. and doing mics. Yeah. And because then the comics are always going to see you as the bartender. Right. They're know, not going to respect it. They're not going to respect it. Well, they just aren't going to see you as a comedian. Yeah. You know? So I, it was the best thing that kind of happened to my career. That's was, great. Um, getting fired from there. And then I just have been doing comedy pretty much ever since straight. Um, so how long have you been doing it now? Mm, almost three years. Oh, so yeah. you're fairly new. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those of, for those viewers and listeners that are watching or listening, what, 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 what are some suggestions that you could give them? Like how many mics does it take to get good? Like, do you, well, I think they say like 10,000, was it 10,000 hours or like something ridiculous like that Jeez. to get good at anything? Yeah. Um, I mean, I make memes on the side, like I'm a memer. Okay. I make my own whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had been making memes for a whole year, just like writing one liner jokes, even before I got into stand up comedy. And then you got paid doing that? Yeah. How do you get paid doing memes? Um, well, I built up an account. I have a following on Instagram. And my memes are all weed memes related. So all right, let's let's plug that right now. Yeah, so I I my account's Wolfie memes, and like <laughs> I started making memes for like Tommy Chong and like really um, from Cheech and Chong. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. And then like High Time started posting my memes, and like all of these big accounts. Snoop Dogg posted my meme yesterday. Like, Snoop yeah. Doggy Dog. He posted a meme of mine. I've been on World Star a couple times. Oh my god. Um, so like. Eventually, uh, I built up a following and weed companies will pay for me to post or I'll make memes for weed companies and Dude, brands and whatnot. that's a great job. Yeah. Wow. And I advertise on my account, excuse me. So it's kind of like opened up a side hustle for me. Mm -hmm. And then comedy came into the picture because I kind of just combined. I love talking to people and getting up in front of people. And mm -hmm. I've been doing it, you know, writing since college and since I was a kid, I've never been afraid of that. Mm -hmm. And then combining like my writing with that, it just made sense to get up on stage and yeah, yeah. And Why it kind of all like fell into place. All of these certain moments in my life led me to where I am. That's now. great. And yeah. you're at the right place. Yeah, yeah. And now uh, with social media and YouTube, you could like create your own platforms. And right. So that's kind of what I done is I I like tapped into this niche audience of like millennial stoner you know, people who don't necessarily fit the whole, uh, like stoner, you know, lazy stereotype that I think comes with. Yeah. Sometimes the, our community, I'm more of like, Oh, these kids either, you know, they work hard. Maybe they yeah. went to college, you know, maybe they, you know, are professionals and they also enjoy, yeah. you know, smoking weed. Dude, well. Joe Rogan smokes. Yeah, that's what I'm and saying. And he's like, like the most successful podcast. Yeah, you know I mean, what I'm Michael saying? Michael Phelps. Like, Come on. It's completely different. You know, it's funny because my parents used to call me, like tell me I was like self-medicating and like a drug addict and then the laws changed and now I'm like a cannabis consumer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Isn't that weird how the, we the title re changes? We rebranded. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And uh, yeah, and I've just like gotten... Um, I've been given a lot, gotten a lot of opportunities in stand up. And yeah, yeah. Um, going to back grow. to the weed thing, uh, I I used to smoke a lot. I just I just stopped. Cause I, it got me paranoid. Yeah. But I, I've been sober for over ten years. Like I don't oh, drink. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. I don't drink. Uh, I don't even drink alcohol. But if I were to try like modern day weed now, like mm -hmm. how high would I get? Mm, it's very strong, which is why, if anything, but it would really blast my mind. I would just do CBD. Because that is for anti-anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's non-psychoactive. It's mm -hmm. not addictive. It helps you sleep, I heard. It helps you sleep. You don't have to smoke it. Like, for example, there are family members of mine who will never smoke weed. Mm -hmm. but Like your brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. I, or no, no, no. Like my mom, she'll never smoke weed, but mm -hmm. she um, uses CBD lotion to fall asleep at night on well, her feet. Because your feet are a powerful absorption agent. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so, um, in, their, in fact, they're giving CBD to people who are trying to come off opioid addiction. Wow. And um, certain places are cool with using that to treat addiction. So it, does, it, so it, so it aids in different things. It's like purely problems. medicinal. Yeah. So it can help with insomnia. Insomnia, pain, anxiety, Crohn's disease. Park epilepsy. What about Parkinson's? No, Parkinson's. Oh, anything geez. with seizures. 
Um, and it, pretty much because your body has an endocannabinoid system, it's designed kind of to consume CBD and right, right, you know, right. Cannabis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, with your how, when did you start smoking? When I was 19 years old. And then what? Do you remember the first experience? What that mm-hmm. what that was like? I was in. Well, the first time I smoked was not the first time I got high. Mm-hmm. First time I smoked weed, I think I was 17 out of an apple with my best friend from high school. Did not get high. Mm-hmm. The first time I got high. I was 19 in college in Vermont. Like an ex-boyfriend of mine had weed and I just was like, all right, here it goes. And I remember I got so high and it was so much fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, so as far as today, are you, can you function? Like, could you write jokes on weed? Could you perform on weed? Oh yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. How do you train yourself to do that? I don't know if I've like trained myself necessarily or if it's just like, I built up this tolerance of this is what I use to get me to where I am able to be in a comfortable creative space. Mm -hmm. So like I suffer from, I hate to say suffer. I live with anxiety and depression and the weed kind of takes a little bit of that edge off Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that I'm able to relax enough that I can get up there and say my punchlines and not give a fuck about, you know Anything, what yeah. else is going on i can just be in the moment yeah and have the confidence of like you know this is me in my best form i guess yeah yeah um you know some shows i won't be high for but like to be honest a lot of shows i'm really high for like headliners have taken me on the road who smoke weed like felipe esparza i went with him he smokes yeah he smoked before shows you know frank castillo mm-hmm. love frank i had him on my podcast recently we uh we play video games with him. Yeah. <laughs> He's amazing. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Frank s- smokes up a chimney. I think it all just depends. Like some people can perform under the influence of alcohol. Yeah. I've tried that and I, it's like the worst. I yeah. like slur my words. I'm not as quick because I'm quick. And so the weed doesn't really slow me down mm-hmm. as much of my quickness. Maybe it does a little bit, but it like it slows me down enough that I can like my brain can get process it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And like come up with the, you know, punchlines or whatever in the moment. So, so have you ever like been on stage and then the weed hits you a different way? Like you get paranoid at all? Um, no. Oh, okay. So it's, it's you cause you maybe in the beginning because I, so much of like your process in the beginning is hearing what other people's opinion of like what you're doing in your process is. Yeah. And kind of that hinders like you finding out like what works for you. Cause like, Mm -hmm. you know, like Doug Benson performs high and like there's so many comics, like, you know, Joe wrote like, Oh, you know, Jade. Yeah. Jade. Jade Catapretapuff. She's amazing. Yeah. She's She's been on here. Yeah. She's great too. She's a big smoker. So it's like, you got to find what works for you and yeah. not really listen to what other people's opinions are. And she's really successful. She's killing yeah. it. She's always traveling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's like yeah. here and there, New yeah, York. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean like it's really just about finding what works for you. Yeah. How do you come up with your material? Do you have to be high to come up with it or is it a lot of... No, no, no. no. Oh. I mean like it doesn't... Um, I would say, you know, without weed I can be funny for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just prefer to be stoned. Yeah. How do I come up with my material? I mean, like I, for example, I get up every day and I make memes. So Mm -hmm. I'll look at a funny picture and be like, how can I apply this to weed or something relatable going on in my life? Mm -hmm. Um, I use Twitter a lot. Twitter's a big, what's your, what's your, what's your Twitter handle? Um, I have, uh, at Wolfie comedy and at Wolfie memes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's why you're here. See, this yeah. whole show is about just a plugs. platform. Plugs. Yeah. To, yeah. Follow to, me if you like smoking weed, but even if you yeah. don't, uh, you know, maybe your mom might. Right. So as far as like um, the people you associate with, do they have to, sm- uh, like, are the, most of them smokers too? Um, most people that I hang out with smoke weed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I have some friends that don't yeah. smoke or they're, they don't smoke as much. Do your folks, do they care that, could you, do you smoke around them or? I have smoked around them. Um, yeah. And they're cool with it now, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's legal. So. Okay. And then like, what about your significant other? Like the person that you date needs to be, definitely has to be a smoker, right? Um, 
he doesn't have to be a smoker. But it would help. But it would help for sure because I have date. I mean, I've also dated guys that like have smoked weed, but they didn't really like the amount in which I smoked because <laughs> it, and I'm like, okay, well, you can't really hang. Yeah, like. So how much do you smoke? I mean, but that I think <laughs> it's I think my like I smoke every day. And to some people, okay. That's, so let's go. Let's start from the beginning of the day when you open okay. up your eyes from bed. You're like, okay, I'm awake. Every day is different. So Give me like, a typical day. Well, it depends on like if I don't ha- like if I have a bunch of like if I have shoots or whatever and whatnot. Usually my shoots are weed. Mm-hmm. I mean, some days I don't smoke in the morning and then I'll have like four blunts at night. You know, damn, you could you smoke four blunts. I smoke. I smoked four blunts today already. So um, you you roll like swishers or I Philly roll, blunts uh, backwards. OK. Yeah. Okay, I, it's been years. I used to do mm-hmm. Swisher Sweets. The yeah. Peach, the Peach Ultimo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, No, I roll backwards. And then some days I'll just smoke joints or, you know, it just depends. You know what I used to love about weed as, as far as before I smoke? It's the ritual. Yeah. I love like breaking it up. Oh, yeah. And then I would I would lick the blunt and then, I would, you know what I mean? And then you would dry it and then light it. Yeah, it, that's my favorite part too. Like yeah. I like ha- the ritual. I it. had my little kit too. I had my little tray. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I would actually like have a method where I cut the blunt in half to make mini blunts. Oh, yeah. I've done yeah, that Yeah, yeah. Like that's mini good. blunts. And then I would roll it and then I would let it dry. Yeah. And then you'd hit it and then you just... This is the thing is because I make music and stuff like yeah. beats and stuff. And so when I got sober, I couldn't make beats anymore really? because it was like going back to what you. That's the reason I'm, why I'm, I was at, talking about it is because I only made beats when I was high. Right. Because I, ha- I love listening to it. it. Got you in that headspace. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. But once I got sober, I had to uh, rewire my brain to motivate me to do it. I had yeah. to push through. Yeah. I didn't like it. I mean, I still feel the motivation to be creative even without the weed. Mm -hmm. Like, I still, you know, enjoy writing. Like, the, you know, I'm an emotional person. So, like, from the emotion, the Mm -hmm. creativity comes as well. Right, right, right. Like, depending on my mood will help me write jokes. Mm -hmm. So, going back to comedy, like, who are some comedians that you look up to, like, that inspire you? Oh, wow. Um... I mean, I love Chris Rock. Oh yeah. Um, I love Bill Hicks, Mitch Hedberg. Um, Rest in peace. Patrice O'Neill. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Sarah Silverman. Oh, she's awesome. Um. I mean, Bill Burr. I mean. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. So those I'm influenced by, I mean, uh, Richard Pryor. I don't know if I said that. I'm no, so, no, no, so. that's you, that's new. You just I mean, said that, Jerry yeah. Seinfeld, Larry David. Oh, geez. I mean, Larry David is. Did you do stand up or is he just a writer? Did Larry David do? I thought he just yeah. did Curb, no? Okay, just stand up. Sorry, yeah. Curb. Sorry. So a lot of those that you mentioned are like just classic. They're like, um, yeah, they were just legendary. Mm hmm. Um, what is it about Bill Hicks that you liked? Is it just his, just his, um, his George Carlin. Oh, Carlin. Well. Yeah. I, Carlin. Also, I mean, George Carlin was George Carlin and Bill Hicks. Cause I think there was one Bill Hicks, um, David Letterman interview yeah. that they banned because of his controversial at the time views on abortion. He had like an abortion joke or just something that like was in today's world, it controversial. Yeah. It, it would, it would just be still so relevant to today. And I think Letterman even, or it was Letterman or Larry King. I forget because mm-hmm. I'm obviously stoned, but he ended up, they ended up playing the interview after he died when and invited his mom to come on oh, and man. just like I watched the jokes and like the jokes would be still so relevant to today. And George Carlin, I mean, he was that's the thing about comedy is like sometimes you're just not going to be funny. You're going to have something interesting to say mm-hmm. right. or just something that there's like bringing the truth to light in today's world. And I think George Carlin, a lot of what he thought about what was going on in our world would still be very much relevant to today. Oh, I agree so, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing is like a lot of these comedians, yeah, they were hilarious. They were super, super funny, but they 
they brought the humor to the darkest stuff. I love dark humor. Oh, you love that. I mean, I just am very dark. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I make jokes about an abor- about abortion and drugs and, you know, being a millennial. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. So, um, did you... Um, that's fine. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What you, uh, finally a reaction from you, Craig. You've been quiet over there. Um, have you ever <laughs> have you ever bombed? Yeah. So I want to hear about that. Like, what was it like, like bombing for the first time? Like, how did it make you feel? I mean, I think I I I think a lot of in the beginning is you're bombing and you don't realize you're bombing. Oh. Does that make sense? I did. I I had a crack. I did six months of the like, open mic scene. I never yeah. thought I crushed it, but like, it was just like. Here's what I'm doing. You know, I'm learning to walk. It's like watching a baby, you know, try and get up and they fucking eat shit and like they just get back up and like each time it's a little bit better and they Mm -hmm. just are a little bit stronger. It's kind of like that. And they don't, you know, you, they don't realize that they're not walking. They're just doing it. Right. They don't really know what, what what, they're doing. Right. They just are, you know, they see the, the, cheers at the end of the parents it's kind of like the same with the odd you know what i mean yeah like, just courteous i mean not yeah, even cheers. courteous like i've bombed i've had audiences where i just did not connect with the audience they just like did not like what i was putting out there because again like i talk about weed and i talk about porn and i talk about a lot of things oh you talk about it, porn yeah oh that's what's up I mean, but like honestly not that not that those don't work all yeah. over but like some of my stuff may not hit is hard in yeah. a lot of places because like here weed works but i've taken my stuff to like other places like middle america type crowds may not you know yeah because it's not legal where they live no i hear yeah it's but more conservative here, yeah i had t- i had a there was one mic that i did here that i just like got in my car and i cried and i was like wow i just did not connect with those people at yeah all. yeah well, like I said, I took a crack at it. Yeah. Um, you know, my brother does comedy. Yeah. And um, he let me open up for, for him in Tempe Improv, and it was a packed show. I think it was a 4th of July show, or it was it was a, a, a big show. Yeah. And I, I bombed pretty yeah. bad. Yeah. It's they part, they kicked me to. off the other shows. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. And he, <laughs> what is that? Oh. That's, <laughs> and I he mean, lied about it. it. No, well, he lied about it. He goes, bro, uh. We don't have time, dude. We're they're running short on time, so Aww, you could you could go home. Heart. But the reality of it was, the manager pulled him aside and said, uh, "Yeah, your brother's act now." No, we can't. Yeah, he's. Did he's you get off. up after that? That was the last time I did it. Really? <laughs> what are you laughing at, Craig? I know I about mean, that. You honestly, know, you know how much it affected me, bro. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. No. 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 Well, I haven't done it in a while. Oh. Honestly, it's it's a very humbling process Mm -hmm. and it's not easy being a comedian in a sense of you have to be able to deal with rejection a lot of rejection in my defense can i just in my defense i did a cowboy rap you know 40 (laughs) dollar bitter 40 dollar bitter 40 40 dollar bitter 40 yeah Yeah, i I did like the whole but the thing is because i do music i just did a show he went to it we filmed it it's going to be up in a few days but um it's for it was a music bit. I tried to do a music cowboy rap bit, but they were expecting comedy. I didn't even engage them. Aww. I was so nervous. Yeah, but you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, I was so nervous. I looked at the ground and I was like, "Yeah, I'm on the You know, I was just like, <laughs> just like looking at the ground. And then it was like a Twilight Zone or a bad dream. And then when I got up to look, it was like they just. It was a bad it. like a bad Twilight Zone. Yeah, like they a, just like didn't it was just it. a packed house just silent like looking at me like yeah that's okay i mean yeah. honestly like every every comedian has to deal with that over and over and yeah. over and over yeah i mean like, and to the viewers who like dude we've heard you talk about this story before dude think of a new story don't don't, don't watch the, the my podcast go just on fast forward no 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 let part. me just say don't comment on my thing, okay? Go to a different dude's podcast, okay? I'm they sorry, I I because I deal Your with trolls. Do you deal with trolls? This. Oh yeah. Because I'm oh dealing my with God, trolls. I, I get trolls a lot. I get uh. <sighs> Just get out, I got dude. called a garbage. Uh, what did I say? A garbage r- leftist or something the other day. I got uh because I've been putting up a lot of abortion jokes, um, 
and people have a lot of dudes have an opinion about jokes yeah dealing with abortion or maybe they cool. have a problem with you voicing your opinion towards that it's probably just my delivery a yeah so no. do you so how do you deal with it do you just ignore it do you um, do you fight back do you comment back sometimes if i have something fi- like if <laughs> depending on like what the comment is i'll try and like troll them back which will get like more likes which is you know the satisfaction of getting more likes on my troll back comment then they're like stupid yeah whatever. but most of the time you just don't feed the trolls because it's not worth it you know what i mean well, do you ever troll or comment on other people's yeah. stuff yeah. you do i mean sometimes with the president when the president tweets um i just like go in and like say something funny back just for the uh just for the traction mm-hmm. can i ask you something oh yeah have i have i been cutting you off no okay because a lot of these uh of viewers they say that i cut my guests off but as you could see during this episode i haven't cut her off okay so, i don't think you need to defend yourself okay, i'm sorry <laughs> start going into a red no, zone no, no, it's okay. i'm so sorry no i just because you I, guys think he cuts people off you guys can fuck off oh i'm just kidding i don't want to say that to your followers that no, I, no, that no 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 I, no the ones that no, are nice is, to no, you, yeah they're the gonna love you yeah. this is gonna be no let's Hopefully go let's get back that. to the positive <laughs> I want to get back to the positive because okay. there's there's a lot of interesting things yeah. going on. I think that you are you are um, it's a unique thing going on because back in the back in the day that'd be frowned upon like oh my god a marijuana comedian or oh my god I can't believe you know but now it's so accepted it's it's legal and yeah you know I what mean, I'm saying I try not to like pigeonhole myself to just weed comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, speaking of trolls, someone did tell me at, under one of my posts abortion jokes to stick to weed humor um and uh and i thought that was funny um but uh yeah i just you know i don't pay attention to to Mm -hmm, those people mm -hmm. so so what's the best method of dealing with this is it to ignore it is it to respond back once and just turn your back is it to what it or like what's the most effective thing ignore it okay so i understand what you're saying but if you were to ignore it right yeah I feel like in the back of my head, I'm like, they won. But did they? Kind of, because it's like freedom of speech. You're not speaking up for yourself. You know what I mean? I think that in my mind <sighs> that they want a response from you. They do. They and really. It's like, you're too busy, bro. You have like m- other big shit going 70, on. 70,000 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. To worry <laughs> about a negative comment. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. You think you see that's the thing is like artists and creators will get so much positive feedback and we won't feel it and then all it takes is one stupid guy holding a fish in his profile dude i gotta dap you for that you know what i mean you're right you're absolutely rachel you're absolutely right and it's like him trying to ruin your day it's like dude move out of your mom's basement do you you know know, this that's (laughs) you know that's real talk because check this out and this is one of my good friends told me this who's highly successful i don't want to like name drop but he's like dude really those people are really your trolls are really your fans yeah so they because they know everything about you they know your history fans yeah Yeah. so that's an interesting way to look at it too that guy who called me a garbage leftist i bet you he follows you that was the thing i was like i go to check and he followed me and I posted it on my profile. I posted like his garbage left wit- like comment, and then I was like, "Thanks for following." And then I posted his. Yeah. Because you know, I you had know fun what? With it. You know, that's that's fine. That's fine. They're they're really fans of yours. Yeah. Um. Now this is a topic that always interest interests me. Um. Dana Moon. You know Dana Moon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another comedian who's on, and mm-hmm. I saw on her Instagram she's that she's really funny. She's really funny. She's yeah. a great, great, great comedian, and she, really positive. But she on her Instagram, she had like a whole like video of like guy com what guy comics say to like hit oh, on yeah, you. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I think I is saw that. is that true? Like, does that happen in the LA scene? Um, you know, I, be honest. It's okay. I know it happens, but for the most part, like. My experience has been kind of mainly positive. You know what I mean? Like, I get comments, but I try not to, like... You don't have guy comedians say, hey, let's go smoke a joint at my apartment. We'll we'll write jokes together. I mean, I do get some of that, but, like, for the most part, I feel like... 
I don't really get a lot of that. Because I just don't put off, I don't really put off those like vibes that I'm looking for that. Does that make sense? But I'm sure other female comics don't either. I just, I don't know. Like I don't really take it so seriously. I don't really have a lot of people sliding into, for the most part, like my experience with like. Sliding into your DMs? Yeah, no, like I get, like I've gotten, I'm, I get treated like pretty respectfully for the most part. So is that with social media and in real life at mics and stuff? I mean, like I said, I'm only three years in, so I'm such a baby. I'm sure there's a lot of disrespect to come, but like who really knows? You know what I mean? Like that's in any industry. Like I've dealt with more disrespect in corporate America than I have in comedy. Like in comedy, I feel kind of at home because I feel like I don't really take things as so seriously and as like offensively because like it's all, you know, it's laughs. You know right, what I mean? like, right, right. At the end of the day, you control how you react to people mm-hmm. and like what, you know, what you let people get a rise out of you. A dude hitting on me is no different than me working in the restaurant. You know what I mean? Like, and it's you just pro- like, that probably happened at the improv. Happen. It's going to yeah. happen all the time. You know what I mean? But I will say I felt more disrespected in corporate America than I have in comedy. That's real talk. Yeah. Oh, that's honest. And more yeah. bullied in corporate America than in comedy. In normal jobs, your normal mm-hmm. jobs. I give, would get give, me, give, give me an example. Well, of that. like just based off, like I would, I had a blouse on one day and my bra straps were showing. And where someone complained um, at a corporate job at this company where it was a video game advertising agency. Which okay, was like whatever. And so my blouse was black and my bra straps were black. And my superior came, who was a guy, had to like talk to me about it. And like one that must be uncomfortable for him because he. You know, it's like him having to tell me, a female, how I should dress, which is like not really his place. And two, my, it was a female who complained because only a female would complain about something like that. No guy would ever complain about no, a girl's no, bra no. straps. No, no. You know, that were the same color as her blouse. No, like, if anything, you know they I mean? would want more contrast. Exactly. So I just, I, that happened. And then I worked this other job where it was a, uh, it was like a, uh, archi- another architecture type Firm. wait 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 before you move on i'm confused of why the female ratted you out like black on black what's wrong with that a black bra with a black blouse i don't women, get it not women but like people can just be assholes in corporate america because they create this like vicious you know competitiveness that like at any moment you're replaceable so it's no, like but, but what i don't understand what was wrong with that it's not know. like it had like I think, crazy I think, designs on I think, it, on your bra. Yeah, but you don't see anything wrong with that. But like she did for whatever reason. So she was she was a hater. Yeah. She hated on you. But that's what I'm saying is like I don't really, ha- I like I got more of that in corporate America than yeah, I did. Yeah, in, in comedy. comedy. Yeah. God, I'm still confused. Why would you complain about something that dumb? Because people can be petty. It, you know what? If it wasn't that, she would have said something about your hair or your well, makeup or saying, something. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, I couldn't do anything right. And then like this other job that I had, like just, I don't know. I, I was, I would just take these jobs that it's like, I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at being a receptionist. I'm not <laughs> yeah. organized. I'm not whatever. So have you ever like, waited tables? Oh yeah. Me too. I'm fine with that. I'm mm-hmm. good at that, you know, but. Yeah. That's so interesting. Mm-hmm. So do you have, are, other female comics are there haters in that world or are they all supportive towards your your goals um i mean i'm sure there are female comics that don't like me i'm sure there are male comics that don't like me but i don't really care what they think right i'm booked and getting paid Dude, three years into that's, comedy that's what's so up. that's what's up you like, can't you can't hold you can't stop what I, her what are you gonna do you can't stop her you just you have the right attitude i think you know because you're always gonna have haters yeah, and it's like if you don't have haters, then it's kind of like that's a bad thing too, because you're like, not, you know, you're not making yeah, enough noise or something. Yeah, you know what I I'm mean, saying? Like, that's their right. There, it's their right to disagree. I mean, like a whole. Yeah. What are you gonna? What is it? You're just gonna hate on someone's art, or you know, if I yeah. think sometimes if people are hating, it's because when you're putting yourself out there and you're, you know, creating art and doing, you know pursuing your passion and your dreams and oh, holds yeah. a mirror up to people who aren't doing that or that's to what their, it like, is best ability you know it forces them if you're doing something that they're not doing they're like well i'm not doing that and then what am i doing with my life oh forget them they're you know 
Yeah. So, I mean, you got to have, let your haters be your motivators, you know? Yeah. So I guess success is the best revenge with that. Like the more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but you also just like, who has time to focus on the negative when yeah. you have so much going good for you? Yeah. Life? There's too much stuff I have to do. You know, there's just doing this podcast. I, there's so much stuff. Like yeah. I, I have to write down lists now. Like I'm like, oh, I got to upload this, 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 and this. And then yeah. Make a thumbnail. And you don't have time to care about what some random person who doesn't like you thinks about you. Right. Thank you. You know? That helps me out. Thank yeah, you so much. Um, so as far as like, I want to know your future goals. Do you, are you uh, like, are you working on a special? Are you like, what's the next steps for you? Um, I mean, I want to, I'd like to, you know, write for a show eventually. I'd like to write my own. Uh, I'm writing a book about um, a certain period of time in my life. So I'd like to do that and turn that into a show. I'd like to act. Mm. um like to get some tv credits yeah soon um and then eventually shoot a special and an album and do it all i mean I'd, right, I have a lot right. of things that if i accomplished even a couple of those things that would be good yeah but like i feel like why couldn't i accomplish all those things yeah so. that's great are, what, are you what do you are you opposed to doing commercial work no i'm i want work i want to make money okay you know so um so that takes like Cause you you're doing the mic scene right, but with that other stuff you need a are you age uh, representation right yeah. like a, a manager like do you have all those things in place? Um, or? I don't have a manager or an agent, but so I've also, so say that again. I don't have a manager or an agent, but um I uh, if you're a manager or an agent, please <laughs> reach her at Rachel Wolfson at on Instagram. Okay, I've gotten this far without representation. I get mm-hmm. you know uh, I get booked on a lot of good shows and Mm -hmm. a lot of good comedians know who I am. Yeah. I'm just, uh, enjoying the process and I just want to get funnier Mm -hmm. because that stuff will come. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to force anything that I don't deserve. Right. Right. So, um, I just, I'm a believer in working hard and that your success will reflect that. Yeah, I know. I, I completely agree. Um, for you, I would like, if you're an agency out there and you check out our comedy, look into it. No, because that'd be great. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying, you. well, this is the thing. With this type of thing, you don't know who's watching. Oh, I know. You don't know who's watching. No, 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 it could be some person that's like, oh, this person watches. Then yeah. next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, you I don't get, know. I get a lot of uh, opportunities on social media from, yeah. from like, the following that I built and just, like, the tweets and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm never a doubter in like anything like that. I firmly believe in all mm-hmm. that. Stuff. That's why people on, on this uh, platform, I always try to put it out in the universe. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I do it. And then I you feel never like know. It's coming and you I just feel added. I, the extra. Yeah. I just added. So, um, Gersh agency, <laughs> CAA. What, what's another one? WME. Craig, what's the other one? WME. One more. Endeavor. Endeavor. One more. Isn't there a a William Morris. William Morris? WME. William Morris. ICM. If if you're a rep, I know who all the agencies are. If you're I an agent at William William Morris, who, who contact her. <laughs> um, would you be um Would you be into like doing a, a a comedy sketch show like a Key and Peele? Yeah. 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 I'm starting to take. Uh, I'm getting back into improv. Good. Um, I'm gonna take Second City classes mm-hmm. soon so um yeah i'm just ready to like work all my muscles and kind of just get good at performing being yeah a good performer mm-hmm. yeah so with you in comedy there's more than one outlet right you could do, you could do a one woman show you could write your own special mm-hmm. these are all things you have control over yeah. right so you got that in the bag if you want it right it's gonna take work you have to sit there and write it out but obviously you could do that you're already motivated to do that these other things would be great because man you get paid too yeah because you know that's why i said commercials because i did a sour starburst commercial i'll show you after we get up yeah so i did a sour starburst commercial in early 2000 dude all i had to do is it was me at the it was me and this other asian kid at the end in front of the Vista, and they fed us uh, lemons. And so I was like, 
you had to make a yeah a sour face like I probably yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was at a Chinese restaurant. They yeah. go, hey, Jimmy, look at the baby. <laughs> and then I come over and I pop a sour starburst and I go, and then the baby starts crying. Dude, I made like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 on what? it. What? One day. You seen the commercial. I'll suck on some lemons. Yeah. When so, life gives you lemons, no, no. you just suck on them for $20,000. So, you know what I mean? Technically, they weren't lemons. Sour starburst. That's they were what I'm sour saying. Starburst. Yeah. That's, technically, they were sour starburst. That's what I mean. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's easy money. Yeah. That's one day of work, right? You get your uh, SAG card, right? And then, hold up, you get day pay, right? You'll make like the day pay, but then you get royalties every time, if it's regional or national, depending on. Dude, who's your agent? Do they want to adopt? Um, You know what? We'll talk after. Okay, I'm no cool. longer with them. They're called Aqua Agency. So shout oh, out to, Lor- I, shout I out to Lawrence that. Har. I still love you, brother. I just, you know, I've been out of the game for a while. <laughs> so I, I booked... um. Sour Star, this is like early 2000. Yeah. I did a, a Taco Bell fajitas <gasps> where I'm, I'm crossing Bell. the street and then. Um, I That's a the, dream of mine. Yeah, I smell the fajitas and I go, ooh, fajitas. That was like 10,000. Like, what? Yeah, 10, 15. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I need to get Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it is now, but you know what? It, speaking of commercials, you know what? The, the main, th- you know, a lot of comedians, you know, Ari and Steve Ren is easy. They've made a mo- dude. I see. They made so bank, many dude. comedians. On they commercials. made bank doing commercials. Dude. I see now. Shout I, out to those two. I see like on the progressive commercials and like I recognize so many comedians. Like Jade isn't a progressive. Dude, commercial. Jade. But this is what you. I mean, this is if you want to do this. If you want to just retire and just. But you're gonna have to. You're gonna be pigeonholed. You, it's a, being in a campaign, like a cam, like a commercial campaign, like you know the Verizon guy. Oh yeah, that's like yeah, a campaign, yeah. right? It's like several. Yeah, the, the subway, subway guy, guy, the Irish Spring, uh, whoever, who else? Jared from Subway. Jared yeah. from Subway. He but got, then that he fucked he, up though. I know. Well, he switched to Sprint, didn't he? The the whoever I'm one of the sure guys well, one of the guys boys. one of the guys switched to Sprint. Or was it little he, kids? He was, I mean, what a backstabber. But anyway, um, if you're willing to be pigeonholed as... What are you laughing at, Craig? If you want to do that, but you could you could literally... Dude, those I'm guys like, have millions of dollars. I, I would be like... I'm like, can they make... I want to be in the first national weed commercial. See, now you're talking. So you could be on a campaign, make yeah. your five mil. Get, I mean, fuck that. I'll be in a dare commercial. I'll go the yeah, opposite. but you don't. But you I'll smoke the, weed. I'll be the pothead in the dare commercial. Uh, no, but I make it look too cool. Yeah, but my thing is okay. Let's say you do a, a campaign. You, you could just retire, get a house in Colorado, and you know. I get, feel like you're planning my retirement <laughs> for me. No, I'm not. The reason I'm I'm not, but I'm just kind of trying to vicariously. I'm not fighting it. I'm vicariously like living through you. No, I'm down. I'm ready I, to manifest this retirement. Because I have a lot of dude, retiring. That you're I have a millennial to do. too, right? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to like pretend to work hard just so we can retire. No, we work hard. So this is what you gotta do. Get with Aqua. Get with the commercial. Get with the commercial agency. The way you make it sound is like I'm dumb for not having to. Done no, this, no, like, no, no, three no. Years no, 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 no. This is the thing. But you make it sound so no easy. One's gonna, no one's gonna tell you this stuff. I don't care. I don't do it no more. So I'll tell you no, freely. Tell me everything, but don't tell. Everyone. It's like him. He just told me about cryptocurrency, right? But when you when other people when other people talk about, it, they go shh. It's like sharing the. You know what I mean? The Jedi secrets. Is it for laundering money or is it for no, we'll talk. For, we'll, for your financial future? We'll talk about. We'll talk after. News we'll talk after. We'will talk after. <laughs> we'll get you on some XRP. Craig got me on some XRP. Some I lost one hundred and sixty dollars in Litecoin, and I've been bitter about Bitcoin. Oh, so you since. know about it? It's up right now, though. It's up right now. Are you? Do you have XRP? I just got tested. I don't think. Oh, I do. okay, okay. <laughs> I just got tested. <laughs> okay, so I'm just throwing this stuff out there, but I think you're already on the right road to you know. Thank you. Your head's on straight. Um, you Do you hear that, mom? Is, so, is your mom gonna watch this? No. Is your father gonna watch this? Definitely. Your not. sister's gonna watch though. What's Maybe your si- someone my sister knows might tell her, "Hey, I saw your sister on this weird Asian guys podcast." Show. Uh, cool. Yeah, that what, happens. What's your sister's name? I don't know if she wants me to say. Okay. But she does get approached a lot in her job, which uh, is about you. Yeah. 
She'd be like, let's talk people- about it. Like, okay. what do you mean? Well, she's a prosecutor in Las Vegas. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So my my parents are like politicians in Vegas. My dad's the district attorney. My mom, she was a judge, and she put O.J. Simpson in prison. So that's like the claim to her claim to fame. Your mom. Mm-hmm. Your mom did that. Yeah. She put O.J. away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get out of town. Mm-hmm. Your mom, yeah, prosecuted O.J. Simpson. Judged, judged it. Yeah, dude, I saw that documentary. Dude, someone else prosecuted it, but she judged him. Yeah, was she in that documentary? Yeah, she was the white lady with the speak to a manager haircut, which she would hate. Wait, that wait, wait, wait. Like that, but it is a nice like level of. That's your mom. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You come from a powerful family, man. I know. Now it makes sense why I'm here. Now, now I'm scared of no, you. No, no, don't be scared. No, I am I'm not now. here to arrest you. God, we got to edit this whole thing. <laughs> now, I wish you would have told me that at the beginning oh my God. of the your- podcast. Now I'm going to be paranoid of the things that I said. Oh, no, no, no. Are we good? Yeah, no. Your mom. I mean, like, if you want to send it for someone to look over it legally, that's fine. No, I'm just kidding. That's oh fine. Nothing God. you said here will can or be used against you in a court of law. Unless you commit a crime. Like, See, see when you start using that language, <laughs> it scares me. I, I think it's good. We, you know, we're just eating candy talking yeah. about topics. You know what I'm saying? I, listen, I smoked, I smoked a joint out in your Yeah, yeah. Court, and I'm not so. tripping yeah. at all. Well, you are tripping more than I am, but you are sober. So. Right, right. But I'm not really tripping. No, no, you're not. You know, it's just, yeah. You, no, no, for sure. Yeah. You're not real. So really. what was it like? Was your mom strict growing up? Yeah. Like, give me some of the things she used to do. Send me to my room a lot. Like, time out? No, like, you're grounded. Like, what does that mean? Like, you are you are in your room, and you can't have TV or phone. Okay. I know. It sounds, like, amazing now. <laughs> what are you laughing at? But, like, right? growing up. It's different for us. It's like different for us, up, yeah. Like, growing up, like. All I wanted to do was talk on the phone, go hang out with my friends and watch TV. And so like knowing that that was all the stuff that I wanted to do, they would take it away and just be like, go sit in your room. And like now I'm like all the things you used to punish me over sound like a fantasy of mine. I'm like, send me to my room. Yeah. No you- TV, no phone, silence, just my giant bed and my thoughts. So what about your iPad? You could watch Netflix, right? I didn't have an iPad back oh, then. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I was born. What, in- 10 minutes already? Hold up, we're still, we're still, we're still talking. Time is a social um, construction. All right. So did your, so did your mom? They, she never like beat you, or like she never like. Are you asking me if my mom beat me as a child? Or like, did she? <laughs> well, you know what? Um, no. Or scolded you? I mean, yeah, I got scolded. I, uh, but no, there were no like beatings. Um, have you seen the movie Mommy? Physically. <laughs> Wait. Physically. Mommy Dearest? Yeah, Mommy Dearest. Yeah, No Wire Hangers. Yeah. No Wire Hangers. <laughs> no Wire Hangers. Which is like coincidentally the only way to get an abortion in Georgia now. Yeah. So. What Sorry, is it about? a lot of abortion talk yeah. in this. Yeah. Well, what is it about Mommy Dearest? Because it's a fascinating movie. Yeah. What is it about that movie that it just like stays with you? Is it because that her performance... Um, uh, maybe because it's uh, horrifying. It's like a Have horror you seen movie. The act on Hulu. Have, there's this documentary. Go ahead. Okay, so there's this documentary on HBO. I forget what it's called. Well, you just said Hulu. I know, but they turned it into a show okay. on Hulu. So the documentary on HBO is about this mom who convinces her daughter named Gypsy that she's like medically. Wait, wait. You know the doc with the girl with the shaved head. Yeah. It's yeah. That girl. So they turned it into a show on oh. Hulu called The Act. And it's all about, remember, she like convinced her daughter that she was sick. And then they used. I it. love that documentary. Yeah, they have, you, have, you should watch The Act yeah. on Hulu because they turned it into a show. And Patricia Arquette oh. plays the mom. Wow. Yeah, that was a that was a crazy Insane. documentary. Could, yeah. And then the, she would lie like she would like act like she was a little girl. Well, yeah, she would. Well, that was the thing is her mom lied to her and told her mom that she. Oh, yeah, it was called Mommy Dearest, wasn't it? The documentary. That's mm-hmm. what movie. So, yeah. So. Oh, no, but I'm talking about the movie Mommy Dearest. Yeah. You're right, but she's talking 
she yeah, took it about documentary. the documentary was docu- also called, called Mommy, Mommy Dearest. Dearest gotcha. about the girl whose mom convinced her that she was sick and she lied to her about her age and mm-hmm. told her that she couldn't walk and she was in this wheelchair and they like were scamming the gov- like the government to get them this house and like oh, pay yeah. for their lives and like they got disability they yeah, got all that and yeah, then, yeah, like yeah. she would like told her she was allergic to sugar and then she would go to the doctor and like punch her with or like stab her with the epi pens and the doctor would be like your daughter's not sick yeah you know and then she got old enough and figured it out that she was 18 years old and like yeah it's really fucked up yeah that's messed up yeah i will i've definitely you know i have hulu hooked up yeah yeah um we're gonna end with this are you um so have you what are what are some of the movies coming out that you're excited i'll tell you like the three that i'm excited about i'm excited for mid summer Mm -hmm. uh it chapter two Oh, wow. And uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. Are you excited for any movies coming um, out? You know, I, instead of movies, because like I watch a lot of stream shows. Go like, ahead. I don't watch Go a ahead. lot of commercial. I'm excited for the remake of Unsolved Mysteries. Oh. Yeah, they're bringing that back, and then all that's coming back. Well, what 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 stream? Uh, all that I probably is going to be on Nickelodeon. I'm assuming, but Unsolved Mysteries they're remaking. So. Mm-hmm. Um and then Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, dude. That. That'll be dope. Yeah. And then um yeah, I mean just like the I just saw the I, yeah. reality show 90 Day Fiance. Give me g- just keep feeding me with just trash. I will yeah. consume it. Are you all caught up with Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just okay, I was just confused like she could have escaped at the end and then she like decided to walk back into town. Yeah, man. Cause, cause, dude, I was a little kind of like conflicted. I was, yeah, I was conflicted. Well, we'll see what happens. Because there's like she was having a hor, she was living a horrible life, you know. Yeah, but I have a feeling her and the the wife are gonna team up this season and like you know figure it take out. Take out all the men. Do it. Cause the yes. men are the men are the problem in that community. The men of yeah, the household in just that community for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what what are you hoping happens? Uh, they yeah. cast they castrate them. I mean, that's a little aggressive. Okay. But like, <laughs> you know, if that were to happen, it just it would be that would make be, for great television. That'd be awesome. Yeah, f- great family night. How about they're the ones that have to get on the bed? Yeah. And then another man comes out and says, "Okay, yeah, it sounds it's your more t- like something on Pornhub than it's like <laughs> Netflix." But either way, I will watch. I'll be there with popcorn and my magic wand. I just I got emotionally invested. I when I watch, when I watched yeah, it, I yeah, I, I felt for. I f- I'm personally her. affected by season two of The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, you know, it's two, yeah, it, it, yeah, it affected me. Season three. I think so. I don't know. I I saw all of them. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay, so are we? How are we doing on time? We have five. Okay, so the way I want to end it is, uh, dude, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. This is um, dope. This is what I want to do to end it on a positive note. I want you to plug everything you can right now when your shows are where they could see you if you have merch what's your instagram go ahead okay so my shows you can find the dates for them on instagram at wolfie comedy if you like weed memes follow uh at wolfie memes facebook twitter instagram also wolfie comedy facebook twitter instagram um and yeah just uh follow and listen and like and subscribe to my podcast, Chronic Relief with Rachel Wolfson on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what I got. And then um, I have a bunch of dates coming up, but I just don't memorize them. Um, and they're on my Instagram. Okay, so if you want to see Rachel perform live, uh, follow her Instagram and just look at her stories and her posts. Yeah, that's when I post my dates. Yeah? Yeah. Did we get everything? I feel like we didn't yeah. get everything. Yeah. So when you say Wolfie, how do you spell that? W O L F I E. Yeah. Okay, so Wolfie. Yeah. Okay, say that again. Wolfie it... comedy. Wolfie comedy. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Did you have fun? This was dope. It was fun, yeah, right? For the yeah, beers. yeah. Uh, and then yeah. And the soda colas. Yeah, you can actually take those. Are you serious? Yeah, because I'm trying to. Me too. I'm trying to get beach oh, body ready. How about you? How about this? I'll take one. You take the other. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You pick which one you want. Okay, I'm gonna take the colas. Okay. You like the frogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the frogs too. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna take the clothes. Yeah, you take the Thank clothes. Thank you. Um, I want to talk to you after also because um, if you could recommend uh, other like some of your friends or other yeah. guests that you might think will be a good fit for okay. this uh, podcast. Cool. Okay, but we'll talk after. Okay. Cool. Real quick. Um, so thanks for joining us. Um, the um, 
La Santa vlog is already out. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. It was uh, Lil Ray and my performance and Monchi members' performance at La Santa. Uh, my friend Craig filmed and edited the whole thing. It was a, He did an exceptional job. Okay, Craig did that. Okay, Craig Efros. Okay, um, we have a Patreon connected to the show. If you want to support the show and keep it alive, look. Look what happened. This is due to Patreon. Some nice person sent us these mic stands. Oh, wow. And we're slowly improving, you know, the setup. But I wanted to shout out the new Patreons this week. So shout out to Steven Brands Guard, uh, my girl Lisa Yoon, and Colin Pedersen. Okay, so if you want to pl- uh, uh, pl- make that pledge and become a part of the Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. I have music also. If you want to check out some music, you can go to stevieweebybandcamp.com. If you want to follow this, the show, go to Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. I have a new vlog series called Stevie's P.O. Box where fans send packages and I unbox them in my bathroom. And it's called Stevie's P.O. Box. So if you want to send your packages, send your packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391, L.A., California, 90093. I want to emphasize this. We reached 70,000 subscribers. That's what's up. Clap, everyone. Clap. Longer. Thank you. That made me feel good. Um, And that's about it. And so uh, did I miss anything? (sighs) I want to make sure because I'm I'm doing this. Did we reach at least an hour? Yeah. It's at least an hour. We're good. No, is it an hour? Yes. Because I have like this OCD thing. If it's 58 minutes, it'll drive me crazy. Is it's an hour? It's an hour. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Sorry, dude. Rachel, that was awesome. Thank we'll you. We'll do a part two, three, four if you're interested. Hell's yeah. Following your trajectory in your career. Hell's yeah. Um, and with that being said, we do have a little raise world. Sorry for the last couple of weeks. Like we were like kind of like um, getting guests coming out of the, the woodworks here and we're like getting all disorganized. But little raise back. So now it's time for Lil Ray's world. Welcome to Lil Ray's world show. All I gotta say is kids minds must grow. I got abducted by some aliens and dropped in snow. Whoa. Stuck into a world that I do not know. So join me in adventures now. And I promise not to have a cow. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey. My name is. Well, what the hell do we got here this week, beep? Looks like a god dang penny, man. What's up, partner? <laughs> Hold up there. Let me let me let me know if I heard this correctly. Your name was Lenny Horowitz. You were a tycoon billionaire. And you embezzled money from your clients and put the money in your own personal account. Then you lied to them and bought several properties, including a god dang expensive ass yacht. Is that correct, man? <laughs> so when the feds caught word, they actually rolled their boats to your goddamn yacht, surrounded you, and then you choked on a piece of goddamn shrimp spaghetti. Is that correct? <laughs> and then, as you're choking on the shrimp spaghetti, you decided 
to drown yourself and jump in the ocean and you drowned and sank to the bottom of the water, didn't you? Of the god dang ocean. Is that correct? <laughs> well, you're lucky. Because I did love and I stu still love Abraham Lincoln, man. Because unlike those other presidents, he opposed them. And as you can see, you're facing me right now. While the other denominations... The nickel, the dime, and the quarter. Look away from me, man. So it's your lucky day. You're, you're lucky. Or I'd kick your god dang butt all over this god dang astral plane. You got me, man? <laughs> so me and Beep wrote a song about you. It goes like this. Don't you move anywhere. This one's about Lenny the Penny. a week and a half for two weeks for another episode of little ray's world man make sure you go to stevieweebybandcamp.com and get some of that awesome music man let's get her done see you later